Hi everyone, this is Ask Finola Howe and I am Finola Howard and we are at episode 30, okay, of Ask Finola Howe. And we're kind of thinking of the theme of love this week because it being the week of Valentine's week and we thought we'd kind of stick with that theme. And the question that we've chosen from a real entrepreneur for our session today is, let me read it to you. What advice do you have to help me fall in love with my business again? Okay, and it's such a great question because I think everybody hits this point at some point in the journey. So let's kind of take a moment and think about our businesses and see where we are with those businesses, okay? And ask ourselves, do we love our business or what stage are we at? And the other question that was asked was, what can I do if I'm no longer in love with my business? So let's kind of explore that a little, okay? So my first question for you, okay, is, do you want to fall in love with your business again? Are you, where are you on this, okay? Is it because we really don't want to just sandwich and push you into a situation where you're just being forced to fall in love with your business. What we really want to know is, are you actually in love with your business or is this just a blip? Because very often, most entrepreneurs know this, that we live on a roller coaster ride. And I mean, one of my passions is to actually smooth that journey as much as possible by showing people the journey before they take it. So the idea is always to make it smoother. But invariably there will be kind of highs and lows in that journey and what we want to ask now is is that just a normal kind of low period where you can just get really tired or just stuff just seems to be going wrong in this moment in time or is it something deeper okay so and really asking that question do you actually want to fall in love with your business again or is there something deeper going on so let's poke at that okay so the love really starts with why you started this business in the first place. And it's best when you're in this kind of murky space to journal. I mean, I'm a huge advocate for journaling. I'm a huge advocate for figuring out, for clearing the air to figure out where you are in relation to the marketplace, in the relation to what you want to do with your business and all of these things. So use this moment to journal, okay? And there's kind of two aspects to this journaling piece. And it is, one, it's cathartic, okay? So just kind of get it all out. What's going on? Why are you feeling this kind of funk about your business? Why are you wanting this permission to fall in love with it again? So just kind of get it out. It's like, I'm just so tired, or I'm just, all of the things that come naturally, you know, normally as part of this process. So just allow it, give yourself space to feel it. Give yourself space to get it out onto paper and get it out of the way. Because sometimes we just need to do that. And I would spend time on this to get it out so that you're not bringing it with you. You want to kind of empty it out of you and empty it on paper so that you're giving it credence. You're telling your brain and your soul and anything else that you are actually listening to what's going on with you at the moment. OK, so just get it out. OK, and, you know, and we do this when. And at times when you know, you're not fired up anymore and maybe it's lost meaning a little. So just get it out. So ask yourself these kinds of question, questions, which is, does it, has it lost meaning for me? Has my business lost meaning for me? Am I as fired up as I used to be? Why, you know, follow this thread. Why do I think this is happening? What's giving me this funk that I'm in, okay? And then walk away, okay? And what I'd like you to do is not walk away and not do anything. I want you to come back and sit down and go, why? And journal again, right? Different day or at least a kind of a bridge of an hour between these two exercises, because you've got to flip your thinking here. So in this second part of this exercise, I want you to remind yourself why you're in love with your business in the first place. What, who am I here to serve? What do I love about my business? And even very specifically, what do I love about my business now, okay? So what are the bits? Because there might just be bits of the business you don't like. It might be a product that you've outgrown, that you want to move on, you want to move forward. Maybe it's a product that's taking all of your energy and maybe it's not profitable. Maybe you want to discontinue it. So if you give your space, first you have this cathartic release, of just getting it out. And then we get a bit more specific of what are the bits I love? 
So it may be that I really still love helping my customer because I love the difference I make. And I really love um, seeing their results. I really love actually training or I really love making art or I really love seeing the faces on these children when they do these exercises, you know what I mean? So there'd be bits that you love. So we're trying to separate, you know, we're doing a little bit of a filter or a sieve of what's happening. So find, so have the cathartic release, which allows you to see the bits you don't love, and then do a separate exercise to identify the bits you do love. This is really important, okay? And you will face this at different stages in this journey because, and this brings me to my next point actually, because sometimes when you feel out of love in your, with your business, it's because of burnout. And many, many people have felt this during the whole pandemic. You know, it's two years. We're just so tired. And there were points in this journey. Now we're all kind of seeming to come out of it a bit now and having much more hope and progress and all of that kind of stuff. But there were points, and some people are still in this space, there were points where it was just so hard, okay? And I remember sharing this with my group as well at the time that about a year and a half ago, maybe six months into the pandemic, I found it very noisy. Everybody was grappling to be the voice of reason or the voice of whatever to support people. Um, and I found I didn't want to speak at this time. So maybe that's happening. Maybe you're just tired and you don't want to contribute to the noise. Maybe what's happening is you need to start hearing yourself. So what we're trying to figure out here is, is it, you know, burnout, exhaustion, just tiredness, a phase, a dip, or is it something else, okay? So give yourself this space. Now, if it's burnout, if it is exhaustion, and you just need a rest, take the rest. I mean, and while it sounds so simple for me to say this, the self-care piece here is really, really critical and forms part of your business strategy. Your self-care should actually form part of your business strategy. And I really mean that because it's the difference between uh, surviving a business and thriving in your business. So take care. So if it is that it's just this phase or this season that you're in, that you need quiet, take the quiet and gather yourself back so that you can actually look at falling in love again, okay? Now, if you figured out, you know, it's not burnout. <laughs> it's not, you know, any of that. It's just something else going on here. And then what may need to happen, and this is the next stage that I want you to think about, because we're eliminating pieces, you know, as we go through this journey. So the next stage is perhaps what's happening is, well, maybe you've outgrown it. Maybe you've outgrown your business or maybe you need to pivot, okay? Very, very often when someone scales a business, it's, it's scary, you know, uh, because inherently it's change. It's fundamental change. So maybe you have reached that plateau in your business where you've kind of, everything is just starting to become repetitive. You keep doing the same things in the same way all the time. And the rewards may not be as great or maybe not as satisfying. So it may be not as great profitably in monetary terms or maybe not as satisfying um, for you as a person. So very often in this journey and very often, especially if you're an entrepreneur who's involved in a startup, there is a stage in this process where the you in the business has to change. If you are part of a larger organization, you know, part of a startup, part of a team, as that grows and that maybe you have outgrown this, and this is why you may be not in love with this business that you created, because now it's time to move to the next stage. And you as a person needs to change and your role may need to change for the next stage of this business. And this can be scary, but this is a standard step on the path of growing a business. So it may be if you are part of a team that you need to change and this is the growth piece. And if you're a solopreneur, maybe your business needs to change. So it's two different stages or types of business, but essentially it's growth. There's a great statement by, and I don't know who it's by, it's actually attributed to Anonymous, which is, and I've just forgotten it. Wow, let me just look at it. Yes, okay, there you go. 
the price of the new life is the old one. And I remember hearing this at one stage in my own entrepreneurial journey. And when we think about the price of the new life is the old one, means that we must leave the old journey behind, the old business behind, to be able to step into the new business. So, and I repeat this, this can be if you're part of a team where you have to leave behind the role you had to move into the next stage of the business with a new role because others in your business are going to take care of the role you had before. That's scary. If you are a solopreneur and you've outgrown the business and you want to change the business because it's still a growth issue, then that, that is your business is fundamentally changing because you've also changed. So again, this, this huge move in another direction and it's scary. But what I would say to you is this is the most normal thing in the world and it actually means you are poised for growth, okay? And it just means that that new suit of clothes that is attributed to this next stage in the business is just a bit uncomfortable. It may even feel too big or just not quite fitting you quite right because it's new. And the path that has to happen then is to become so familiar with this new stage in the business, with this new life that you're carving for yourself, that if you become so familiar, the old life will simply fall away. The old stage in the business will simply fall away. The old role will fall away. So embrace it. It's very uncomfortable, but you can embrace it and you can consciously and actively choose to make this new stage so familiar that it will get comfortable and you won't feel so scared anymore. The other part of falling in love with your business again may be that it needs to pivot. It may actually not be working. It may not be profitable. You may have the wrong solution to your customer's pain points or, which is often very often happening, the wrong customer here. So you may have not, there may be a mismatch between the customer you thought was the right fit for you and the offering or the solution that you had for them. And this is why we spend so much time really understanding the connection between why we're in business, our purpose, who we are meant to serve and what we will serve them with. Because if those three things are not in alignment, then it won't work. So sometimes that takes a pivot, and like a move, a really small move or a pivot into a really different direction. So I'm kind of leaving you with this idea that Watch for the signs, listen to what's happening. You don't have to bulldoze your way to make things happen. It's actually, the signs are always there, the market will always speak to you, and you will always speak to you, and your gut will always speak to you if you create space for it. So you've got to take care of you, and you've got to be in a space where you can listen to the market to know which way to move that helps you fall in love with your business again. I hope this helped you today. This was episode 30 from Ask Nola How, and it was, what advice do you have to help me fall in love with my business again? And this is Valentine's week, and I want you to be in love with your business again. So find the peace that brings you joy, and I'll leave you with that note. Have a wonderful day, everybody, everyone, and I shall see you next week for more from Ask Nola How. Have a great day. Take care.